Welcome fellow Dragonborn to a unique weapons guide for the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. This is unlike many guides I've done before, so as a preface, for this one I'll only be covering unique weapons before the expansions, those will get their own naturally. If you're looking for Daedric artifacts, follow this annotation for that guide. The difference in this guide is that it is not intended to be a full list like many other equipment guides I've done before. The reason is because of the wiki considering more than 50 items unique, and I don't think many of us, including myself, are going to sit through a list that long. In other words, I'll only be including weapons with unique looks and or properties. For example, Rundi's Dagger and Valder's Lucky Dagger. Both of these are considered unique steel daggers. However, Valder's Dagger will be included because of its passive critical chance effect, while Rundi's Dagger will not, since it's a run-of-the-mill steel dagger that happened to belong to someone named Rundi. With those wordy details out of the way, I'll be showing you how to find each of the listed unique weapons and what makes them special. Items with quests attached will be marked with a star. And now, let's begin. Speaking of daggers with special magical effects, Bloodthorn is the first we will be looking at. On the surface, it is a steel dagger with a base damage of 5 and soul trap. What is not shown in the menu, however, is its ability to absorb health on strike. The Bloodthorn is found in Hag's End, which can be reached through Deepwood Redoubt. Once making it to Hag's End and cutting or sneaking your way all the way through, up to the top of the main structure, the dagger is found on top of a sacrificial table. Now for Valder's Lucky Dagger, which I spoke of earlier, taking on the base appearance and damage of a steel dagger. The special effect Valder's Dagger has is a 25% chance of a critical hit on any strike. And because this is not considered an enchantment, Elemental Fury can also be used with this dagger. Assassins take note of this one. Valder's Lucky Dagger is given to you by Valder. You can find him sitting outside of Moss Mother Cavern, wounded, in the forest of Falkreath. Assist him in avenging his hunting party during the quest Hunter and Hunted, and he will give you his dagger as a way of saying thank you. Another dagger, unique in every way, is Keening. It is a dagger of Dwemer make, has a base damage of 8, and comes with the enchantment Keening Sting, which gives it a chance to absorb 10 points of health, magicka, and stamina per strike. In vanilla and without unofficial patches, Keening is supposedly a single charge weapon, making its use extremely limited. However, even if you don't have the unofficial patch, you can wear armor that gives 100% destruction spell cost reduction to give this unlimited charges. Keening is obtained through the long and drawn out quest Arneal's Endeavor, given to you by Arneal Gain at the College of Winterhold. This is a Radiant quest, so the dagger's final location will be determined by that. The last of the daggers is a signature weapon of the Dark Brotherhood. I am speaking of the Blade of Woe. This one's base damage is 12, which makes it the most damaging unique dagger in the game. It has an additional bonus of a health absorb enchantment, stealing 10 health per strike. Taking the steps to join the Dark Brotherhood is the obvious way of getting this dagger. However, there are multiple ways to do it. Progress to the main quest line of the Dark Brotherhood, up to Death Incarnate where it is given to you, or during your recruitment to the Dark Brotherhood, you can just outright kill Astrid for it in the quest with friends like these. But if you do it that way, you'll be missing out on something else on this list. Moving on to the unique one-handed swords, we begin with the Ghost Blade. Not just because of its ghostly look, similar to the drain weapons in Labyrinthian, but the item is stated to do three extra points of damage ignoring armor, and also boasts being the lightest weapon in the game. The Ghost Blade is found in Anselvund, which is northeast of Shore's Stone. On your first visit, shortly after entering, you'll begin the quest A Love Beyond Death. Make it to the end of the dungeon, and the Ghost Blade will be left to you on the pedestal. Next is the Dragonbane, a unique Akaviri sword that is best used for slaying dragons. Who knew? This one falls into the category of level loot. If obtained at level 46, the Dragonbane will have a base damage of 14, do 40 points of extra damage towards dragons, and 10 points of shock damage to others. The Dragonbane is found in Skyhaven Temple, during the main quest Alduin's Wall. In a small armory adjacent to Alduin's Wall is where you will find this sword. If you are enjoying the company of the Thieves' Guild, during their main quests you can get the Nightingale Blade. The level of this one is also determined by your own, and at level 46 its base damage will be 14, and have the ability to absorb 25 points of health and stamina. The sword is given to you by someone named Carlia during the Thieves' Guild quest Hard Answers. Speaking of the Thieves' Guild, another weapon can be obtained and also easily missed. That weapon is Chillrend the one-handed sword with the highest damage in the vanilla game, as long as you're level 46 anyway, at which point Chilren's base damage is 15, and its unique enchantment, Frost Feed, deals 30 frost damage per strike and has a chance of paralyzing the enemy for 2 seconds. Shortly after gaining the previous sword, you will be on a quest called The Pursuit, during which time you must break into Riftwield Manor to find a hidden room and some plans. You must avoid many traps to find this room, but once you reach it, Chilren is in an expert level locked display case. Get those lockpicks ready. The final unique item of the one-handed swords ends with wind shear. Though this scimitar's base damage is 11, its value is not in its base, but in the effects that it carries. Bash attacks with this weapon have a 30% chance to knock your enemy off their feet, but to do this your offhand must be free. Wind shear does have another effect however, which is a 100% chance to stagger the enemy. If you'd like to keep the enemy off balance the entirety of a fight, wind shear will make it possible. This unique scimitar is located on the Kataraya 
and lodged at the very front in the bowsprit. The Kataraya is a ship that moors at solitude during and after the quest Hail Sithis, which is close to the end of the Dark Brotherhood questline. And that does it for the one-handed swords. And now onto two war axe type weapons, starting with the notched pickaxe. By appearance, it's a standard pickaxe with a shock enchantment, but also when equipped, it will give a five point bonus to your blacksmithing skill, though not what many would choose for combat as shown here. The notched pickaxe is found at the very top of the throat of the world and can be picked up after the main quest of the same name. Even though war axes didn't get the attention they deserve, the second war axe type is the poacher's axe, a unique woodcutter's axe that comes with the very rare enchantment, Huntsman's Prowess. This is one of the few that can be disenchanted for their effect. Huntsman's Prowess increases your damage to animals. Though this axe comes with a bonus of 3, the damage can be quite a bit higher with the proper enchanting skill. The Poacher's Axe can be found in Halted Stream Camp, and within this bandit hideout one of them should have it in their inventory. Now to a couple of battle axes, one of which does justice to the name, and it goes by the name Wuthrad, the weapon of Yskrimor. It has a base damage of 25, and is said to be especially deadly to elves, which translates to 20% extra damage to the elven races. The pieces of Wuthrad are obtained here and there during the companion questline, beginning in Yorvaskar, a mead hall in Whiterun, and during Purity of Revenge, Wuthrad is given to you to carry into battle. The second one is unique just by its enchantment. The Steel Battle Axe of Fiery Souls is the only one that comes with the Fiery Soul Trap enchantment, which can be disenchanted and used on other equipment, giving both the Soul Trap effect and an additional 10 points of fire damage. This weapon is found in Ironbind Barrow, which is west of Windhelm. You will find it inside in the final chamber on the back of the throne. Now for a couple of unique Warhammers, the first being the Longhammer, a special variant of the Orcish Warhammer. It has a faster swing speed by 30% compared to other Warhammers, and being it's not a magical effect, this is also a weapon affected by Elemental Fury, which raises the swing speed even further, rivaling the damage per second of Daedric Warhammers. This is found in Liar's Retreat, which is southwest of Dragon Bridge. This is a bandit outpost that upon entering, you find is under attack by the Falmer. In the final chamber, you will find someone named Rod dead on a table. The hammer should be on top of him or somewhere nearby. When it comes to slaying trolls, a little extra damage is always nice. The Warhammer Trolls Bane is for just that. It comes in the form of a steel Warhammer, and on top of its base damage of 20, will burn trolls for an extra 15 points of damage. But sadly this cannot be disenchanted to be used on other weapons. Trolls Bane is found east of Valthum, in an unmarked location, on the corpse of one Frothnir Trolls Bane. You'll know the location when you see two trolls having a face off. Onward to a couple of bows, starting with the Bow of the Hunt. This is the second weapon with the Hunter's Prowess enchantment, and as expected, it's on a hunting bow with a base damage of 10, but is far more superior to the Poacher's Axe in damage alone since the damage towards animals is a bonus of 20. This bow is found in Clear Spring Tarn, just north of the Rift, and southeast of Mistwatch. In this location, there is a small cave, and within, you will find the bow on a shrine protected by a troll. A good chance to use the aforementioned hammer for a fantastic bow for hunters. Now for a more powerful ranged weapon, the Nightingale Bow. As the matching sword, it is gained through questing with the Thieves Guild, and at level 46 it comes with a maximum base damage of 19, on par with Daedric Bows, and has the enchantment Nightingale Storm, dealing 30 frost damage and 15 shock damage. The Nightingale Bow is given to you after the quest Blindsided, another gift from the mysterious Dark Elf Carlia. but at this point I'm sure many of you see the value in joining the Thieves Guild just for the weaponry. Well, except for maybe the next one, which I was tentative on including, but it looks unique and does a unique thing. During a prior Thieves Guild quest, Hard Answers, you gain access to a special staff called the Spider Control Rod, which is used to control a Cantor spider by means of pointing and shooting. During this quest, you gain access to Calcelmo's lab within the Dwemer Museum. Due to it only being usable in this part of the game, you understand why I questioned adding this. It'll make a nice trophy at best. Another, more useful unique, is Halder's Staff, which is one of very few staves that have multiple effects. Projectiles fired from this staff will cast Soul Trap and Pacify on your target for a total of 60 seconds, in theory making it really easy to capture souls, but during recording I could not get it to use the Pacify effect properly. Regardless, this staff is found on Halder, who is in Halder's Cairn, which is southwest of the town of Falkreath, and starts out as a cave that has a bit more to it, including a longer than normal boss fight. Another more offensive staff is the staff of Jairet Galderson. It takes on the appearance of a restoration staff, but that is where similarities end, since it does 25 points of damage and unlike other shock spells, deals double of that in magicka damage. To obtain this staff you need to begin the quest under Sarthal, which starts in the Mage's College of Winterhold. It involves a field trip with Tolftir and ends in the chamber of Jairet Galderson. It should be on the table in front of him and it is highly recommended that you grab it as soon as you see it, because Tolftir can pick it up and use it against Jairet.
And now for the last unique weapon in this guide, the Staff of Magnus. The one-of-a-kind, if not legendary, staff also obtained through siding with the college. This staff promotes continual casting of spells, since when it is used, it absorbs 20 points of magicka per second, and if the target is out of magicka, health instead. You are able to fight for the Staff of Magnus under a quest of the same name, and when the college questline sends you to Labyrinthian, you will be on the right track for this powerful staff. There you are, fellow Dragonborn, that does it for this unique guide. Though I tried to include weapons that are the most useful and unique, there may be some that you feel I missed. And if that's the case, share with myself and your fellow Dragonborn what the item in question is and where to find it. Regardless of this, I love to hear from all of you. And if anything, leave a comment on your favorite weapon to use. If you'd like to see more guides like this, you know what to do. This is Kato Genesis. Thank you so much for watching, and your next adventure awaits.